This time in Rad Rat Video, we're talking about extremely goofy skateboarding, a game that has sapped most of my life force. Let's get started. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where you can learn something new about skateboarding and skateboarding media and other things. Uh, today, we're talking about a game called Extremely Goofy Skateboarding, a game that really shouldn't exist. I don't understand where it came from because it seems like it's based off of a movie, an extremely goofy movie, which came out in 2000, in February of 2000, direct-to-video movie, and it did pretty bad. No one liked it when it came out. But this game, Extremely Goofy Skateboarding, is clearly based off of it because it has goofy son Max in it, which only exists in that universe. And I guess in the movie, Max has to go to skateboard practice after school or something. So it's clearly based off of that movie somehow, but it came out in fall of 2001 you know, over a year and a half later. Why would they release a game as a tie-in with a failed movie from a year and a half ago? I really don't understand. I think what probably happened is they were gonna do this this movie up real big. They were gonna do like big promotional tie-ins. Maybe it was gonna be released in theaters and stuff. And then when they saw the final cut of it, they're like, man, this movie really sucks. Let's just crap it out on a tape somewhere and let's cancel that game. And then time goes by and they think, you know what, we got this thing. Let's just crap it out somewhere. And that's what they did. So. You could get it, you could get a demo in a box of Kellogg cereal. Uh, apparently you could get the full game in a package of Purdue dinosaur chicken nuggets too. So um, in that equation, I think I'd rather be the chicken nugget than the kid receiving the game. But uh, yeah, I don't know. This game came out, like I said, in fall 2001, which put it in competition with Tony Hawk 3. Tony Hawk 2X on the Xbox had just come out. Um, let's see, there was Skateboard Park Tycoon, which was much better than this one as well. Uh, there was also the uh, ESPN skateboarding, which I think I got rid of, but they had all that stuff out at the same time. And yet here's this game to compete with it. Let's take a look at it. The game starts with this hellish landscape. This is the menu. It was designed not to have any words, either to make it easier for kids or to make it so they don't have to get it translated. I don't know why, I can't explain it at all. If you click around randomly for a while, you'll reach this screen, which is where you pick the mode, I guess. The bottom one where it looks confused is a tutorial, which is pointless. These are the career mode, I think. I don't know. If you listen, Goofy will say there's a tech session and a shred session. I don't know what any of that means. Tech session. Shred set, goof skate, trick tutor. On the next screen, you can customize your character and outfit. I went with Max because his board almost looks skatable as opposed to Goofy's surfboard with wheels. So let's get started. You get a few worlds with different unlockable sections, but before we get too far, let's figure out the controls. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller and it plays a little bit weird. The A button will crouch and ollie just like you'd expect. The X button grinds and sometimes does tricks. I can't really explain it. Most of the time it doesn't do anything. If you hit down down X, you'll do a heel flip. You can grind with it and even do different grinds, but there's no telling how that works. It's also used for stalls and inverts, but that'll work about one in 10 tries, which sucks because it's a challenge for this level. The Y button is for grabs, but they take so long that you're just asking to bail. And it never asks you to get a certain score, so you're wasting your time trying tricks anyway. The B button is kickflip. That's it. It's not the flip button where you add in different directions for other tricks or anything. It's just kickflip. Or when rolling on flat, it's a nose manual, but again, without score totals, who cares? Lastly is the D-pad for steering but it doesn't actually work like that. Hitting the left button sends a subliminal message into your character's brain, which will make them fairly likely to think about turning in that direction, but there's no guarantee that they actually will. Just going where you want to go is impossible. Trying to get out to these Baywatch lifeguard stations is really hard. Going up a hill makes you turn down on your own sometimes. I wish I could show you what it feels like. Here's what the challenges are like. Collect goofy faces on coins. You can basically ignore this one because you'll get them as you play the game normally. I also have to collect beach balls. Not a big deal, although stuff can be really hard to find because of all the fog and the draw distance. You can search an area and not find something because you didn't get close enough for it to pop in. And I'm sure that's what happened when I was trying to find all these trash cans, which I'm supposed to knock over. Honestly, I'm shocked by all the mischief here. What are they teaching the kids? Make sure you wear your helmet, but you can steal coins and knock over trash cans? But I looked for this trash can for about a half hour. 
No joke. This level is tiny and it's basically empty, but I just can't find it. I even tried ollieing into the water to end my misery and guess what? You can skate on the bottom of the ocean, but there's nothing there except for rocks that block you from going further. Why is this there? Well, you want to know why? It's because they didn't want to animate a splash and make it kick you back onto the beach. That's too complicated. Just make it so you can skate around through the water and then just forget about it. It's just so lazy. After you beat two challenges, it tells you you're done. I never got the last trash can, but the tunnel on the road is now open to the skate park. I had to collect helmets, coins, and do these inverts that don't work. No problem. I mean, it's a problem trying to get around in the level, but at least it's small enough that they couldn't hide anything too well. When you unlock a level, a key will appear on the ground in front of a tunnel or a gate somewhere. The only problem is there are two entrances in every world and only one will open. You don't know which. In this level here, I knew that the gate was open, but I had no idea where to go. I found this one, but sorry, that one's still locked and there's no way to open it from this side. I explored around for about 10 minutes. You'd think that the exit would be on the outside of the level somewhere, but it wasn't. I exited the level thinking I could just spin the pie chart and get into the other level directly, but that doesn't work either. You have to pick up that key and open it. So I had to explore around these repetitive valleys and stuff for a while to find my exit. Later, I found myself at this construction site, which Tony Hawk 2X was able to make interesting, but it doesn't really work here. One of your challenges is to rotate an I-beam. I don't really know what this means. I figured I'd have to ollie over it, which I tried, and it's really hard. You can ollie basically the exact height of the rail, so it's really hard to clear. And grinding it doesn't seem to do anything. So I figured that this arrow means tilt. Maybe I can break the rope somehow and it will tip over and that'll do it. No, no luck there either. So I only had one more option cancel out, load directly into that level instead of using the tunnel. When you do that, Goofy will explain the challenges to you. Unfortunately, my audio capture didn't work, but he says something like, well, gorsh, why don't you duck under those big metal poles, a uh, yuck? So yeah, duck under the rails. I should have known it'd be something easy. As the game goes on, it gets easier and harder. The amount of coins goes up and up until you have to get most of them to get that check mark, but they also mess up a couple things. You have to collect cacti in this desert level. There are five to get, but I think they only wanted these small ones to count. You can knock over both of these and get two points for it. Once you get all five, you'll keep finding more. There's no way that's what they meant for it to do. In this level, you have to up arrow on a rectangle. Who knows what that means, but you have to do seven of them. Apparently that means grinding seven segments of the track. You don't have to balance a grind, you just hold X. So you'll finish this in a few seconds. The way the game is made is really confusing to me. There's zero creativity in what you do. Collect tumbleweeds and cacti in the desert. Go to the old west town and collect sheriff badges and grind on something. Not sure what this one is, but I beat it on accident while working on the other ones. They clearly put some effort into making all the new stuff for the level, but they just pasted the same old crap into it. And a lot of the times the towns and parks just reuse everything. You have to knock over trash cans and fire hydrants in earlier levels, and the later ones have them too. And the fire hydrants still explode and throw you up into the air. I always got distracted by these, and I had to double check if I needed to do anything with them or not. But since these assets build up over the levels, the later ones actually have more going on. In this campsite level, there are a ton of rails to grind and paths to ride on. It's almost starting to approach being a real game at this point. But don't worry, it's still really messed up. You have to collect fish, and you can just ride around the bottom of the river and pick them up. Clearly not what they wanted you to do, but nothing stops you. The last level is a competition. Finally, something different. Finally, a reason to do all those tricks and try to get a high score. Right? No, of course not. The only difference is that you have to do grabs, and you have to collect trophies. You finally beat the game, and what happens? Well, you get a new key, which is weird since it's the last level, go through the gate, and it takes you to the menu. The end. All done. But while I'm back here on the menu, I figure I should take a look at some of the other game modes. I noticed that I unlocked this one, which is a half-pipe competition. You can play it single player, but there's really no point to it. You have to do as many tricks as possible, and you get a multiplier for how much airtime you get but I think there's a maximum here. You can only do one kickflip, one shove it or heel flip, and one grab per air. So if you just do all three every time, you could theoretically get a maximum unbeatable score, and when your time is up, you win. This one down here is just a free skate mode. It keeps track of your score, but that's about it. 
But here is the tech session. And this is stuff that was really missing from the other mode. In this version of the career mode, you have to replay all of the levels, get all the keys again, but the challenges are more skateboarding related. Get a high score, hit gaps, sort of. You have to collect these arrows, which are at the tops of quarter pipes and other gaps. But look at this one. I cleared this spine probably 20 times before I managed to grab it. And this icon here makes no sense to me. It's goofy pushing and then doing a shove it, I think. So get some speed and then do a flip trick. I tried to figure out how this worked for a long time. After a while, I decided that this probably means combo. I would get that icon to pop up when I did grinds to flip out sometimes, but it's not consistent at all. There's also a timer here, but I don't know what it does. I had it reach zero in every level and nothing happened. Maybe it's the time limit for the high score, but I couldn't tell you. You know, I just don't know what to say about this game. It's not good, but it somehow has glowing reviews everywhere. There are positive reviews on Amazon, the reader rating on IGN, and other places you can look, but it absolutely fails compared to anything else that was out at the time. Pro Skater 2 and 3 were on PC, and Skateboard Park Tycoon plays about the same, except that you can build whatever you want, you know, the majority of the game. There's no reason to play this one, and if you loved it, it's because your childhood sucked and your parents didn't love you. So there's extremely goofy skateboarding. One thing you might not have noticed if you weren't watching too close is that the character Mongo's all the time too. Like they have a 50-50 chance of animating push with the right foot. And somehow they got kick flips and heel flips to go the right direction and to have the right name. So how do you get that wrong? I just, it's so just baffling to me. I don't have any more words for this game. Don't play it. Don't look it up and try to download a disc image and install it like I did, you're just gonna waste your time. If you loved the game as a kid, that's great, but just leave it back in your history. Don't bother trying to pick it back up again. There's much better Disney games, um, Disney skateboarding games even, if that's what you're into, but uh, just, just let this one die. So that's all I've got for this game. I have a lot more videos right here you can check out. I do a lot of game reviews, but I do a lot of other things in the skateboarding world in general. So you can tap my logo right here on screen to subscribe and keep learning new things about skateboarding three times a week. Thanks for watching.